So we're back for part two with Esther Hernandez, my very, very special guest, who we've been uh, working on a documentary together for over five years now. Yes. Yeah. So I know we talked a little bit about what it's like for you to have been in front of the media dozens and dozens of times you've been on television. Mm -hmm. But do you think people know your story? No. No. You know why? Because the media comes for a minute. You know when something's happening when somebody's getting out and then they disappear they're not there day and day to see what we been through what we go through with this pain the real fight the real fight that we're fighting for you know they're not there for that now um <clears throat> With, with you, Margaret, that you're doing this documentary, you've been with us for five years, I've known you for five years, and you have done more. You've been with us, you're documenting all this stuff with Guevara and all the cases and stuff, you know? And, and, you know? and we had the, um, we were able to film in court. We could yes. film your son's case in court. You were there. Which I think, I think it matters. To, to have cameras in the courtroom. Yes. I think that it can have um, a benefit. Uh, a, it, I think it could be beneficial yes. because everybody knows they're being watched. Right. And that's different than a transcript because who looks at transcripts? Exactly. To me, that's a biggie right there. Yeah. Having cameras in the courtroom, you know why? Because then, like, let's say this assistant state's attorneys, they kind of be like, you know, they don't want to say too much because they know they're on camera. Mm -hmm. At one point, I remember the assistant state's attorney, she had came up to me and she said, uh, oh, we're going to be in camera today. I said, yes, we are. So watch out. <laughs> but yeah. I, I really, I mean, I appreciate you so much, Margaret. You have done so much. You're my friend. You're like family. You are family to You're me. You're family to me. You've been with us. You follow us. You follow me to go visit my sons. We talked about it from the way there, way back. So, to me, you do more, more than the media. Can I ask you something? What does, what does justice look like to you? <sighs> justice. To me, it's, it's not justice. There's no justice because even though we be out there screaming, you know, let them people know that our loved ones are innocent, they were wrongfully convicted, everyone closes their ears. You know, it's like a dead ear. They don't want it. Nobody, to nobody wants to take accountability. No. That's why there is no apology. There's no. no apology from the city of Chicago. There's no apology from the Chicago Police Department. And it's because nobody wants to take accountability. Nobody does. Yeah. They'd rather throw money at it. It's just about, to me, this is just about money. Money is not justice. No, money does not no change justice. the system. And, and yeah. so, yeah. I can't imagine how frustrating that is. It is, you know, the system is so broken and, uh, for us to go decades and decades fighting, and if it wasn't for us, believe me, the Guevara would have never been exposed. So what about this mayoral race happening in Chicago? You've got Brandon Johnson, you've got Paul Dallas. Right. So our message to them is, what are you going to do about this? About this wrongfully convictions? Because it doesn't stop here. And there's going to be a press conference uh, next Sunday where um, hopefully they'll be there to answer those questions. 